Hi, Hardies. I am Marg Stark. I'm an admin for the Facebook page, and this is Heart to Heart. Today, I am joined by... I'm Lori Pearson from Mobile, Alabama, and I'm an admin on the Facebook page, too. And for seven seasons, I believe... We have had the joy and the privilege of having Peter DeLuise serve as a director for Wind Calls the Heart. Welcome, Peter. Yay, welcome. Thank you. Thanks very much for having me. I am not an admin, and I am in Vancouver, <laughs> Vancouver, <laughs> British Columbia. Very good. And it looks like you're right on set right now. Yes. Oh, it's a mirror. <laughs> All right, there's the church. Uh, now, even though I'm in Canada, I understand everything you're saying. Okay, good. We'll, well try that's to make good. We'll try to the translate translator it for acts you. working well, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so after a zillion seasons with When Calls the Heart, this this last episode you wrote, you threw your hat in the ring to be a writer. Tell us about how that came about. It was sort of universally adored as an episode, so it's quite a debut. We really loved it. Uh, well, I had uh, I had been a writer, uh, director, producer on Stargate for for many years, mm -hmm. so that uh, that was not the first uh, kick at the can for me. Uh, but in uh, season eight, uh, due to COVID, I ended up uh, sort of providing a, a sounding board function for John, and we ended up spending a lot of time on on uh, on, on FaceTime together, and and I sort of helped break some of the stories. Uh, outside the writer's room. So he thought, uh, he very graciously invited me into the writer's room in season nine, and uh, that worked out great. And so I was, I was there um, right from the beginning of season nine, and, and uh, I was um, contributing in, in the way that any uh, writer in the writer's room would uh, to all the storylines, but then I was given a, a specific assignment. Ah, very good. So throughout season nine, your influence is there, not only in terms yeah. of directing, but also in terms of yeah. writing and, uh, and uh, officially. Uh, officially. I got well, whereas in season eight, I was unofficially contributing. I writing. see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. And was did you have a favorite aspect of, of episode five? Well, you know, uh, for the longest time we had talked or threatened depends on who you uh, speak to, uh, about trying to have a, you know, a motorcycle slash horse race. Uh, and we, we were just trying to figure out how, how to make that happen. And so this, this, this was a natural. And the original reason why it came up was more, more in the original reason why we uh, instituted it was more about trying to show how Nathan had gotten back into the saddle and had gotten his mojo back but then it became way less about that than than what it turned out to be in, in uh, um, finally in the episode well clearly he must have gotten some mojo back to climb on the horse and do a race that that yes. yeah well it wasn't it, i mean if you get hit uh by a car on a horse and you're right. and you're and you get your bell rung and mm -hmm. and your wing in a sling you're, you're bound to be hesitant to get back of into course. the saddle. And so it, I think, um, I think um, Hallmark's, some of the notes that Hallmark gave look sort of balked at that, even though okay. that, you know, in, in movies, that's a very natural thing. Tom Cruise mm -hmm. has not has done it, not once, uh, but twice. He did it in mm -hmm. Top Gun and, and then again in the, in the race car movie where he's, where he's had a terrible tragedy and he has trouble getting back uh, uh, on top, right? So, so it's a natural as a heroic, you know, a flawed heroic right, thing. It's course. a natural yes. thing. To Hero's do. journey, uh, yes. Yeah. Right. So, um, what did they balk at? I know in the past when we, when I, I think I've it done... was, I think it was a damaged version of Nathan, and and uh, so it became less about that uh, and, uh, and more about uh, the the you know uh, old versus new. Uh, m modernization versus the uh, okay. Stuff, yeah. mm -hmm. So interesting. Yeah, I remember doing a set tour with um, one of the other writers in a previous season and her talking about how, how sensitive Hallmark is about the treatment of animals and um, and that there were always notes that I think we were talking about Rip and, 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 and that the writers had written a scene honoring Rip, but for whatever reason, um, again, Hallmark was, is very protective of 
of animals. So I thought that was interesting. So I didn't know if that had figured in. Well, uh, if a Mountie's horse is hurt, I mean, what more uh, emotional damage could could you? Could right. You Very suffer, true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And the other Very. thing is that they're, they're partners, right? If Absolutely. his horse is not up to snuff, that could that could that could put his uh, life in jeopardy, and vice versa. He's in charge of, of protecting it, and in, in, so he failed the horse in that regard because he's they both got hurt. Right. So there was there was a whole lot of very fertile territory to be mined there. But um, after it was clear that he had not triumphed in the the love triangle, um, the next order of business was uh, bringing him, you know, uh, knocking him down to, you know, to the bare the bottom of the emotional ladder so that we could so we could build him back up again. Right. And so that started with. um a car crash, which is a great emotional sort of hit in the face. And it also was a great, uh, because it touched on the theme about how the, how the industrial revolution was happening and, and the modernization of, of the times were happening. So, so what better way to demonstrate that than, than to be hit by a mechanical car? Right? Yeah. And that's important for the hero's journey mm -hmm. to have the, have the hero sort of brought to his knees. Yeah. As painful as that can be for Hardys who adore that's, our Mountie, right? Okay. And then you start reading on social media. I can't believe they, 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 they hit him with a car after all that he's been through. <laughs> I can't believe, I can't believe they made him grow that mustache. Mm -hmm. Like he, he asked for that mustache. That, yeah. We didn't do that to him. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So it's not just the hero, hero's journey, but it's the actor's journey. I mean, he gets to do so much, so much stuff as an actor with this storyline now. Yeah, that, so um, part of part of the the uh, the potential problem of of being the third wheel in the triangle was now what, right? And and, mm -hmm. and uh, so so it was it was important to to I think to for him to pick himself up and 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 you know and and you know uh, uh, pick uh, have a stiff upper lip and sort of come at life with a new vigor. And, and so that was a great opportunity for him to overcome, you know, a ton of adversity, right? Uh, and cool. it was also a great door in for uh, a potential relationship with a new character in, in, right. in, for, for May uh, uh, to come in and try, try to help him out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's sort of shot out of the cannon, you know, having stumbled over dinner invitations before he got right to it. So maybe, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe he did have life life is short life, life is, is short, short. You don't yeah. hesitate you want to eat right. food with a pretty girl get out there and do it. <laughs> oh nice. great message i love that nice <laughs> i love that well i'm going to switch gears a little bit we've solicited some questions from hardy's and brenda wubbin from oregon this is still about about your episode, episode five, she wants to know the inspiration for the vows at the end of the episode, the vows. We were expecting, I love you, and you took it to a whole other poetic level. I would love to take credit for that scene, but that was 100% John Tinker. Wasn't oh. that romantic? I love that. So romantic. Yeah. Oh. So one of the, next time you have them on, you'll have to ask them the same question, okay. of course. But, but uh, just for me, it was a fantastic touchstone in a in an acknowledgement about how their relationship is is moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. So you you know she's already whispered "I love you" while he was asleep, mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, this was way more layered and nuanced than just two people saying "I love you," right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, yes. how amazing was that? And like when I was when I when I read it, and then when I saw it on uh, after the execution, I was like, "This is great! I'm going to get credit for this scene." <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were giving it to you, so yeah. well. No, yes, it was, and John's well, generous. He gave it to yes. you. <laughs> well, he he sh he should not have because I'm I'm not smart enough. I mean, he's forgotten uh, more about uh, writing than I'll ever know. But when he just geniusly thread that through, and it's way, uh, you know, if I may say so, in my humble opinion, it's way more interesting than two people exchanging "I love yous," right? Yeah, I think, I think I think it, it was unexpected. Deep. And and uh, and that's I think that's why people responded to it because they go yes all right now we get the I love yous out and right. then they start doing this and they go oh well, this is way way more interesting mm -hmm. than we thought it was gonna yeah 
Right. Yeah, right. no, it, great, it, great way it to threw us piece. back to that. Episode, I mean, yeah. May I have your hand or whatever it was mm -hmm. um, from mm -hmm. season one. one. Season, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, oh, with what? Jack. You know, the yeah. it, it jumped ahead to a place where sure. we weren't expecting it to go, and then it pulled it, back. It, so. also, it also harkened to when he was quoting the book after the shortly after the the the, the moment when they went to the library together and she 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 okay. was like oh what are you what are you saying to me mm -hmm. and he was like yes. I'm quoting this book and she's like oh you fooled me <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when calls the heart y'all always give us the unexpected absolutely really so okay we knew we found out we didn't know so much about writing now there's so much we don't know about direction and how it shapes the show that we, we love. Can you give us a specific example of the influence your direction has had on a scene? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, I could go into the, you know, the subtle nuances of, of shot design and the tone and the blocking of the actors, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to talk to you about execution instead, because I think that's way more interesting. Uh, I came up with a list of, of things that people might not have known uh, that, that a direct had the influence over, right? So uh, one thing that, that uh, I helped out with uh, was, uh, I think a lot of people will be surprised to find out that then when, when uh, Lee proposed to Rosemary, that was originally scripted for inside the church, but uh -huh. I insisted that we do it outside the church because I was like, it's, it's a way more romantic setting. She's up on the steps. So it's a Romeo and Juliet moment. And uh, it was a great way to start a uh, scene with her in her wedding dress. Remember that, that position? That, that was, that that was beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Uh, uh, Jack proposing uh, to Elizabeth was original. No, uh, not, no one knows this. This is, uh, I think, the first time this is being revealed. That originally was supposed to be uh, the words, marry me on the side of the water tower. <gasps> And, and Homer kiboshed that at the 11th hour. And they turned to me and they said, do you have a, an idea? And I said, well, yeah. Uh, how about we use the, the pond as a reflecting pool for a, a whole bunch of candles in front of the church? And they're like, uh -huh. okay, let's do that. And I said, we, we can justify it. We say the whole town came out and helped out while Abigail distracted her. And then that'll be the, that'll be the justification for all these candles. And uh, we were gonna use candles anyway, as a way of coming, having her come around the corner and oh look at the water tower. Oh my gosh! But we we had it lead to the the uh, pool. So that was another uh, oh, thing that cool. I know. So you got to you just got to take a pause for a second because uh, it's just a lot to absorb that it was going to be on the water tower. Water tower. Very deep. That yeah. is really something. Wow. And I, I don't. I mean the the shot of of her walking through the candles and her skirt and the whole. No. I mean that. Where she yeah, takes so the I, step of the panels. I, I, that is an awesome scene. I love yeah. that. Scene. It was it was fun. It was it was reminiscent of, of the beginning of the the Wizard of Oz, right? When she goes down yes. the yellow brick road. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yes. That's what that's what inspired that shot. Wasn't that fun? Oh. Yeah. That's so amazing. Was, that was one. Well, well, I, the list the list keep going, things. keep going. We keep going, keep going. So I've We're got with you. uh I did that. So uh when Lucas gave the library space to Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Remember when? Remember when he handed her the key? That that, that was not scripted. I I used this key as a symbol to represent the gift of the library, and there was a very oh. weighty moment, if you remember, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Because he, such a such a you know a huge gift, magnanimous, uh, yes, exactly. But but the key was the the turning over the, of the key was the was the moment, right? Of that, but there was no visual mm -hmm. cue for, and now it's your library, right? So that that was something as a director I was able to as in in terms of execution I was able to institute. Great moment. Um, when Ali oh when Ali barged in to the uh, military tribunal to defend Nathan that originally yeah. she just waited outside to see what had happened. But I said, well, it, she's so in, she has such a feeling for him and she's so precocious she should go in. And John uh, realized that that was the right way to go. So he rewrote the oh scene. Oh, my to, goodness. Oh, wow. to make that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it, can you imagine that scene without it? I don't think no, you could, No, absolutely. Right? No, no. It was the no. tearjerker so, moment. Oh, uh, so a lot of people were like, why is he? Uh, so you know how Lucas always is drinking tea in the morning? Yes. So that, that came from 
I would, I say, I would say, well, what is he doing now? Because we had a lot of scenes where he was just there. And was like, what is he doing? Well, give him a cup of coffee. Well, he doesn't drink coffee. So he's, in real life, he's allergic to caffeine. Uh, so he oh, always wow. said, well, I'll have tea. And so I said, okay, give, give him some tea. I'm saying, and, they, and the prophet was like, again? Like we did tea last night. I said, that's a morning ritual. He has tea every morning. That's not weird. And then I was like, you know, I think it would be better because I, I had I had binge watched Deadwood. I think it would be better if he was up in his balcony on, oh. on the on the upper deck because we we never we don't use that and and if you had one you would definitely use it right. So and that that's that's one of the things they did in Deadwood is he would come out and and uh, swear yes. he would come out every every and just look at the whole town and take it all in you know. Mm. So I was like, we should just do that, right? And then I ended up posting a picture who wore it better. And I had both of the men on <laughs> yes, there. So then, so John saw that and he was like, yeah, I think, and I think that inspired him to write way more scenes up on the balcony because it just seems like a natural, right? It was, it was a, yes. it was a great place to, to, to stage a scene. Cool. And then it finally, the, uh, the most profound uh, one would have been it just in terms of, of, differences uh just the sheer direction makes was do you remember when jack was saying goodbye to everybody and he, he rode around the corner and, and elizabeth chased him down and called out them and he charged back and gave her a big fat kiss and then we were all 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 gooby in the script that that moment that private moment they had around the corner that was not in the script i i brought that to the can you imagine that scene without that yeah now, you're are you, so you're that. responsible for tearing our hearts out <laughs> Yeah. Oh my so gosh! Both, it's oh my gosh! Yeah. That scene so just both, tore both, our hearts out. Oh. So both the actors came to to uh, to work that day, not knowing that that's what they were going to do. That that's and I said, look, and I have an idea, and I want to pitch it to you. I think when he goes around the corner, you know, this is just too much for you to bear, and you chase Absolutely. him down, and you have this private oh. moment around the corner, oh. and they both are like, awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun. So those those are some of the things, that just in terms of I'm going to do air quotes execution not not i'm not right. boring you with is that a close-up is it a wide shot is it a 50 50 right we don't want to talk like that that is kind of boring but things like hey let's really tell the crap out of this story that's that's mm -hmm. that's where i'm coming at it yeah yeah and it's really interesting um i think people who are not involved with tv don't understand that that you know, imitation is the is a form of flattery that that writers all the time and directors pull from inspirations from other shows and other movies. If it worked there, it could work here. And and I see you doing that so much. Well, when when, when John said he wanted to have the, the pharmacy, the pharmacy, I said, well, you know, what's a, what's a great pharmacy is the one from It's a Wonderful Life. And mm -hmm. so if you if you look at it really carefully, you're like, oh, we we were inspired by the pharmacy from It's a Wonderful Life. And it's and it's the same. It's it's got the it's it's got a, a counter down the way and it's got the back and it's mm -hmm. got the window where the pharmacist gives you your medicine. So that was a lot of fun. Bravo. So cool. yeah, I hope oh, we love it. So cool. Well, we do have a question here about camera techniques. Which, who yeah. decides which camera techniques best bring a scene to life? I know that's a little bit of the ex, the, the te technical details, but so, artists do like technical details. Sure. sure. So, so the person who's responsible for, for creating or, or designing every shot is, in fact, the director. So that's part of the homework, right? So how, how are, is he or she uh, going to tell the story? What's the best way to start a scene? Uh, when do we want to go close? When do we want to go back? Uh, you know, do we lovingly caress this person's face as they go by or, or whatnot? And uh, Michael Balfrey, up until uh, la last year, uh, was our director of photography. And, and so that's a, that's a collaboration. So I, so some, uh, I would say, you know, I want to start the shot here and then they wanted to go over there and they would, they would either say, yeah, that, that sounds great. Or they would offer, you know, um, their uh, recommendation and it, it's, it's a collaboration. But now um, uh, this year, uh, taken over for my, uh, Michael Balfrey, uh, uh, because he's gone on to uh, different and greener pastures as Andrew Coppin, who was our uh, A camera operator for, for many years. So he's very familiar with the show. And he's an absolute dream to work with. I love this guy. And he's got great ideas about uh, shot design. So 
it is a collaboration, but ultimately the director it tells tells the crew and 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 for that matter the uh, the cast where he'd like them to stand so he can so he can stage have it staged in the way that he he plans he or she plans to uh, shoot the shot. Very cool. Of Teamwork. all the ep- of all the episodes that you've done, um, and you've done many, which one would you say has had the biggest impact on you, or maybe it taught you the most, or contributed in some way to your development? Um, when John wrote, it, at the time it seemed like a little thing, but it was so ingenious. When John Tinker wrote. Uh, when Minnie appre- uh, approached Dr. Carson and, and she she said, I, I, I need to thank you because um, I had, you know, a, a hardness, a coldness in my heart. And when when Angela got the measles and we went and this doctor wouldn't treat her. Uh, and, and that's why she went blind. And, and, and she was carrying that that burden, that 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 anger, if I'm going to identify it as anger. Um, and John wove this beautiful moment where you go, that's, she's carrying that, right? And so John very cleverly equated uh, Angela's blindness, which is a, a burden that they need to carry with racism. And I was like, that is genius. And that inspired, of course, uh, Cooper coming and his survivor's guilt and his, you know, I, I don't understand. She's uh, clearly Angela is a better person than me. Why is she blind and I'm not blind? It doesn't make sense, right? So I, I, I'm, I'm getting the I'm getting goosebumps as I describe it. But that was one of the things. The other thing that I didn't direct it, but the, the other thing that re- is I think is one of the most powerful moments on on the series, the entire series, is when Gowan, uh, when you know, when Abigail was standing up for Gowan, in, in spite of what everybody was tur- had turned against him, and he said, "I don't." Uh, what was the line? He said, for some odd reason that I don't understand, you still seem to believe in me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's so Because it was such a testament <laughs> to both of their characters. The fact that she could see goodness in him. And he was like, I don't, you know, I appreciate the, but I don't, I don't get why you're standing up for me because nobody else is, right? And even he didn't see what she saw in him, right? And I was like, that is the most powerful thing. And I still, I still uh, get, uh, I still get uh, worked up about it when I think about it. Yeah. Well, we're going to try not to make you cry. We made Brian Berg cry the other day. We're the Good. new Barbara Walters, <laughs> you know, of the Hardys. But yeah, yes, Barbara is, Walters. Are... She loves making people cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, those are incredibly moving um, scenes and themes in our yeah. show no question such powerful yeah. stories oh just beautiful. yeah so during filming this year you tweeted so many behind the scenes peaks for hardy's and it really meant a lot to all of us and we've been hearing lately about how you took such care like the the antique items that you restored and brought to to populate the pharmacy so mm-hmm. is there any aspect of this show that you don't care about? It just seems as though you lavish your love and your creativity on, on the show and as Hardy so much. Well, the short answer is no, uh, there isn't <laughs> anything I don't care about. I, I'm, that's why that's part of my job is to care about everything. And I, you know, what my, what I really, what my goal is as a director and a storyteller is to try to institute um you know, something, I hope that I can entertain and make people laugh, but I want to be socially relevant. I'd like to be able to, to have there be a reason why you put your life on hold uh, for 42 minutes and, and gave us your attention. So, um, I, you know, I love antiques. I love old cars. I especially love history. I mean, even though the, the show is clearly not uh, an accurate history of our, our reality, it's an idyllic uh, history. I mean, we, have, we haven't touched on World War One. Uh, we, we haven't touched on... Uh, uh, Spanish influenza, uh, Mexican Revolution, like none of those big things have happened in our version of, of reality. But um, I love, I love, absolutely love history. I love uh, uh, human invention. I love how humans uh, come together to overcome adversity. Um, 
I love the human condition. I, I love when people can smile in the face of adversity or overcome adversity. And that's why I love the, the Canfields so much because so much. They, they have so much working against them and yet they, they rise above it, right? And uh, th that, that's, I, I just find that joyful, uh, showing people- oh, Inspirational. Overcoming, yeah. No so question. That's, I, I, I over answered that question, but there. But no, I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't say just that there's anything I don't those, care about. Well, we you're either all that you do and those little peaks that you give us, because that that really that does it for the Hardy's community. Just that connection well, is so wonderful. Well, I, I have I have to admit that that I love filmmaking. I talk about filmmaking all day long, and I love. Uh, behind the scenes stuff. I had even since I was a little kid, when my dad used to bring me out to the sets, and and so I because I love it, I love to share that as well. And so it makes sense to me to to like, like I think people would like to know that Lucas's office is in the dentist's building because we can't fit them all in the thing. I think people would like to know uh, that that um, that the uh, that, that the church is being used. As a as a um, a makeover studio space for uh, Lee Coulter and, and Rosemary's a bedroom, right? So things like that. I think that the people find that fascinating, right? You're absolutely correct, sir. They, yes, they and really you also you also really sustained the Hardys, I think, in the off season during kind of a cantankerous time. So I think I think you were a voice of calm and delight and helped us sort of get our bearings again. So I really appreciate that. Well, uh, it's my pleasure. I, uh, as I said, I, I love talking about filmmaking and I love answering questions uh, about things that, that have to do with behind the scenes. And I'm, uh, if you want to do this again sometime, I'd be more than happy. To. Love it. Yeah. Well, you are one of our favorite tour guides, as we said, one of our favorite tour guides at HFR, and we feel like you have just taken us on a whole tour of Hope Valley. Thank you so much, Peter. Maybe, maybe we should do a, a video version of one of those. You're talking about like an in, like a first person. Uh, like, we hey, are like here a, for you. Yeah. We can do it. Fun. That yeah. would be really fun. So, that would be so awesome. if there's a season 10, we'll do that. We'll make, a, yeah. we'll make an appointment and do a, do a on-set tour. I love it. Sounds awesome. Thank you. And Hardy's, be sure to tune in. Hardy, be sure to tune in and see more of the incredible storytelling from Peter DeLuise yet to come this Sunday, 8 p.m. on the Hallmark Channel. And be sure to join us and Peter on Twitter using hashtag Hardy's. We'll see you Sunday. Bye. See you Sunday. Bye-bye.